make accurate assessments and judgments of other people's personalities, and that would be in terms of their typical thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. So starting with the assessment piece of it, personality psychologists have created many measures of several aspects of personality, including things like traits, and values and motivations and even typical behavior. And these assessments do reflect what people are really like. And these assessments can also predict some pretty important outcomes. So they can predict things like how satisfied people are going to be in their relationships. They can predict career success, drug use, and even how long people will live. And then on the judgment side of things, this is talking about the judgments that all of us make, not just personality psychologists, when we try to figure out what other people are like. And there's also evidence that people can make accurate judgments of others, although this depends on a variety of different factors. So there are characteristics and behaviors of the people making the judgments who are called the judges, or some people call them the perceivers, that those can influence how accurate they are. There are aspects of the people who are being judged who are called the targets that can influence um, how accurately they are judged. So there's lots of factors that go into it, but certainly at least some of the time, people can make accurate judgments of others. There are multiple aspects of judges that are related to how accurate they are. Although different studies, there are also some conflicting evidence here that there doesn't seem to be one solid characteristic that's related to accuracy, although some things do tend to pop up over and over again. So things like intelligence and just general cognitive ability tend to be related to accuracy. And we're also finding that judges who have good social skills, who are agreeable, who are psychologically adjusted themselves, tend to make more accurate judgments. And then on the target side of things, and this one, once you say it, seems pretty obvious, but people who are more consistent, kind of always showing the, the same self or easier to judge, sort of we all know those people who no matter when you see them, they're kind of always the same. And then we know people who you're never quite sure what you're going to get. Uh, so that also influences levels of accuracy. So we know that there are multiple ways to increase accuracy. And one way to think about this is in terms of making the process of making an accurate judgment more successful. And so one way to think about this process is in terms of the realistic accuracy model, which is a model that was proposed by David Funder and became pretty popular in the 1990s. And there are four stages within this model that describe the process that has to happen in order for an accurate judgment to be possible. The first stage is relevant. Relevance. So there has to be cues that are relevant to the trait that you are trying to judge. And then those cues have to be available. So they have to be made external in some way. So the person being judged has to say something or do something or have an, a facial expression related to an emotion that they're feeling. Uh, to make that available. And then the person making the judgment has to detect that information. So they have to notice the cues that are given off by the target. And then the final stage is utilization. They have to use those cues to make an accurate judgment. So you can increase accuracy by increasing success at any of those stages. So if you look at the first two, relevance and availability, the key there is to make sure you're interacting with or observing people in situations that are going to elicit cues that are relevant to the trait that you want to judge. So if you're trying to judge something like bravery or courage, you would want to see people in maybe a dangerous or kind of a threatening situation so the brave people can be brave and the not so brave people can you know, do something else. And then that would allow you to uh, detect those cues and make an accurate judgment of bravery. So as you can imagine, thankfully, there aren't a lot of dangerous and threatening situations that we're in all the time. So that's a trait that's harder to judge just because the cues aren't as often available. But there are other traits where the cues would be available in a lot of different situations. So something like extroversion, which reflects people's um, sort of level of social interest and how outgoing they are, uh, also has to do with like dominance and leadership, that those cues can be made available in a variety of situations. So just in a social situation or in a work situation. And so that's a trait that we can typically judge pretty accurately. So it's important that we see people 
in situations that are going to elicit cues relevant to the traits that we want to be judging. And then another thing that can affect that re relevance and availability piece of the process is we want targets to feel comfortable in expressing who they really are and what they're really like. So judges who can create more comfortable situations, maybe because they're socially skilled or because they're more agreeable, they're psychologically adjusted themselves, people feel more comfortable around them and are more likely to reveal what they're really like. This field could go in multiple ways. I think it's interesting whenever you're in an area, you sort of start out with basic questions. So you start out with questions like, can people even make accurate judgments? If they can, how do they do that? And I feel like we've answered that piece of it pretty well. And now it starts to get into the more nuanced, the more complex pieces of it, where people are looking at things like meta accuracy. So how accurate uh, am I at knowing how other people see me? Or an easier way to say that is how accurate am I at understanding my own reputation, right? So that's getting at another level of complexity. Also, a lot of what we do is in laboratory situations, often with people who are unacquainted with each other, because that just gives us some nice statistical control. But then we know less about people who are already well acquainted. And then I also think that maybe this area will move into sort of connecting with, with other areas as well, because the more we know about accuracy and the benefits of accuracy, I think other people are going to start to get interested. Like, oh, well, being accurate is good for romantic relationships. That's great. So let's learn more about that. Is our, can we increase uh, relationship satisfaction and maybe decrease the divorce rate if we can help people to judge each other more accurately. And then I also think we have great implications in the business world to really help employers figure out how should they be making judgments of personality? Uh, how can they do this well? That oftentimes what we know in the research world is not what happens in the business world and not what the business world is using. So be able, being able to transfer that over, I think is a way that you could see things going in the future as well.